Hi everybody and welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks. It's the edition for Thursday evening. It's the second day of November 2023 and today started on a very cold note by early November standards. The afternoon though, not half bad. Some uh, official reporting stations from regional airports mostly. Uh, we had 28 this morning at the Youngstown Warren Airport, 26 in Pittsburgh and 27 in Wheeling, but those are just the official Station. Some local thermometers picked up on some slightly colder readings in parts of our area, not shown on here. I saw a couple of thermometers this morning that were closer to 20. It was a hard freeze, as expected. First thing this morning, we had great conditions for radiational cooling last night. It's what's uh, sometimes known as a three dog night. It's an old timey, you know, weather phrase, um, basically indicating how cold it was uh, or is expected to be. Uh, one dog on the bed, eh, that's enough to keep you warm on a chilly night, but when it's really cold outside, yeah, three dogs. Yeah, it's just kind of a fun old-timey weather saying. It was that kind of night last night. We wouldn't think much about mid-20s in December, but in early November, it's pretty cold. Check out that sunset this evening. Wow, what a nice one. We've got a veil of uh, departing cirrus clouds this evening. Those high clouds, kind of wispy, uh, make uh, for a great sunset. Our sunset this evening was at 617. But of course, this is about to change with the return of Standard Time this weekend. So in a week, next Wednesday, our sunset will be at 5.09. And three weeks from today, just before Thanksgiving, the sunset will be at 4.58, starting a about a three-week stretch of pre-5 p.m. sunsets late in November and into the month of December. And of course, it's a big debate always, twice a year. Hey, should we still be doing this? Should we still be changing the clocks? Um, it's not something I can personally get all that worked up about. I think there's advantages and disadvantages to each system. If we went to year-round standard or year-round daylight saving, they got nice compromises to go ahead and keep changing the clocks. But if we went to year-round standard time, of course, there wouldn't be any changes in the winter. But in the summer, our sunrise, earliest sunrise, would be at 4.49 a.m., earliest or, or latest uh, sunset, I should say, 7.59 p.m. If we went to year-round daylight saving, uh, no change in the summer, of course, but in the winter, uh, the latest sunrise in early January would be at 8.47 a.m. That's pretty late. Now, we would have an extra hour of daylight towards early evening, but yeah, my view on that is hey, it's the middle of winter, and not many people have outdoor plans at 5 p.m. in the middle of winter anyway, so uh, I, I kind of lean myself more towards just leaving things alone, changing the clocks twice a year. It's a little bit of a hassle, sure, and in the spring we lose an hour of sleep unless you work an overnight shift. Um, but to me, it's really no big deal. Anyway, on to the weather this evening. Uh, it's pretty quiet nationwide. We've got a pretty you know, potent jet stream uh, coming into the northwestern U.S. and driving storm systems in that direction down to northern California as well. But the rest of the lower 48 states, high pressure is in command. It was a cold morning this morning all the way down in the deep south. They had a freeze all the way to the Gulf Coast first thing this morning. As we go into our Friday locally, it'll be cold to start, but not as cold as this morning. No one's going to see 22 or 23 degrees, pardon me, Friday morning, but 31, 32 degrees will be pretty common at the start of the day, but it'll be a faster warm up on our Friday. We're talking 50 or so by midday, heading into the middle 50s, which is very close to where we should be at this time of the year. Now, today you notice the breeze a little bit in the afternoon. You'll notice the breeze, I think, even more on Friday. Um, and you'll also notice an increase in cloudiness during the second half of the day, but I do think those clouds will be unproductive. So if you're taking care of leaves Friday afternoon, if you're heading to high school football playoff action Friday evening, we will be dry, albeit under a blanket of clouds. Now this front will come just close enough to us that I can't rule out a sprinkle or a shower later on Friday night, early Saturday morning. If it happens, most of us won't even notice. I think as we get into the daylight hours on Saturday, we should be just mostly cloudy and uneventful. This becomes kind of a stationary boundary that hangs out for the balance of the weekend, but Uneventful weather for the second half of the weekend. We've removed a small cha uh, shower chance from our Sunday forecast. It'll be a mix of sun and clouds, it looks like, for Sunday. Probably a little brighter in the afternoon than in the morning on Sunday. Temperature-wise this weekend, a little bit on the cool side Saturday. Now, warmer than it was today, but not quite as mild as tomorrow. It'll be just a, a few degrees below average on Saturday with limited sunshine. With a few more hours of sunshine on Sunday, again, especially in the afternoon, we should do a little better on that first day of standard time. 57 degrees, Sunday afternoon. All right, long range. Uh, temperatures will peak next week early. I mean, real early, like on Monday. It'll be near 60 degrees. But uh, by the middle of the week, uh, this isn't a harsh cold snap. It's not an Arctic blast or anything. We're not going to see a uh, handful of inches of snow in some parts of the area like we had yesterday morning. But it will be below average, it looks like, starting around midweek and taking us into that second weekend of November. Well, speaking of next week, of course, a week from tonight, 
It's my annual winter forecast. Uh, if you're interested in the short to the point version, hey, just what's the forecast? I don't care about the why. The TV version is for you. Make sure you tune in at 5, 6, or 11. We'll post that version online as well. If you're watching this video, Weather for Weather Geeks, you're going to like the longer, uh, more detailed version, I suspect. Um, in years past, that video can run 15 or 20 minutes. We get into a lot of detail, a lot of the meteorology. Uh, it's not voodoo. It's not thrown darts. There's, you know, there's hard science behind this stuff. Now, it doesn't always mean that the forecast ends up being perfect. Case in point, last year, things went a little bit sideways. But we do put hours and hours and hours of research and thought into these winter forecasts. And uh, this winter, I suspect, is going to have a different flavor overall than last winter, especially after the first of the year. December could be pretty mild. I don't think we're going to see a return of what we saw at Christmas time last year with severe cold. Now, the winter as a whole was very warm, but we had a three-day stretch right around Christmas that was very cold, um, the third coldest Christmas on record. It was in the lower teens in the afternoon on Christmas Day. Uh, that uh, was, you know, the highlight of December. The rest of the, the, uh, rest of the winter was very, very ho-hum. It was the fifth warmest January on record, the second least snowy February. We had less than a half an inch of snow at the Youngstown Warren Airport in all of February. Um, so the winter overall was very tame, with the exception of just a few days right around Christmas. I think that uh, January, and especially February this time around, are likely to be quite a bit different than last winter. So we're going to get into all those details next week on my annual winter forecast, making its debut next Thursday evening, November the 9th. Hope to see you then. Have a great rest of your night, a great Friday, great weekend. I'll see you back here for Weather for Weather Geeks on Monday.